Today, a spotlight on Como 6152. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to this post covering finance and problem news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Well, over the past couple of months, I've been extremely busy with my one-to-one -one conversations where I do a deep dive into a particular area and look at the property dynamics in those areas. And from the wide range of conversations I've had, a particular one that stood out for me was an examination of the area around South Perth. Not least because so many people have been claiming that the Perth market is booming like there's never been booming before and that now is the perfect time to buy. Well, maybe, maybe not. So this is my analysis of 6152. And just before I start, a quick reminder that if you would like a one-to-one -one conversation on a particular area within a postcode and go into some deep analysis as to what's going on, as you will see shortly in this presentation, I'm open to doing that. There is a cost involved and it does take some time to do the research and I'm pretty busy at the moment with a lot of research underway. But nevertheless, there is still some capacity to look at a deep dive. And frankly, in the current environment with so much going on, I think it's really critical that people really do the research and get granular and look at what is really going on. You can't rely on just the property portals and you certainly can't rely on what the real estate industry is saying about a particular area. So if you'd like some specific help, feel free to reach for me via the DFA blog, the links are below. But now let's get on and look at Como. It's based on my information, it's not financial advice. I just always have to caveat that I'm not a financial advisor. We pull information from all sorts of sources, including customer surveys, and that includes the 52,000 households, which is running all the time. So it really gives us a very important direct line of insight, as well as some of the other information, which is a bit more scrambled. So that's basically what we do. And for example, then we can look at things like mortgage stress, the price trajectory, the history, what's going on in terms of people buying and selling, migration, the economic data into the core market model, which is my own proprietary model. And it spits out then some thoughts as to what price dynamics might do ahead. It's a point in time it changes, but it gives us a bit of a flavour. Talking about Como 6152 two which is sort of south perth uh, x marks the spot zooming in a bit you can see that it's got obviously that the highway running through the middle of it it's got the main motorway right up the coastal strip it's not a huge area but also quite convenient for perth so it's south perth population of around twelve and a half thousand canning highway divides it and there's a few local comments which is just interesting you know, and lovely little suburb i wanted to highlight that there's some really good comments about schools and locations and you know things like that access but i do think it's quite important also to think about the aircraft noise a few people have mentioned this to me and i spoke to a couple of agents in the area i asked them specifically about the aircraft noise and they did concede that it is actually more of a problem now than it used to be not least because some of the curfews that used to exist don't exist anymore in terms of the planning, they've just updated the plan. It's in the process of being signed off, but it is actually worth reading insofar that they are proposing considerably higher densities of developments ahead. They're not talking high rise, but they're talking lower rise, uh, higher density development. You know, if you want to get more information, it's probably worth going and following the link. It's there through. You can basically drill down into it. But the, the general tenor is that they are in looking at considerable increases in population over the next few years. And a lot of that is to do with subdivision. And it's a lot of transformation of individual plots into multi-occupancy plots. Specifically, the idea of you know four or six or eight on a plot. So this is a, an area that's in significant transition 
And uh, I keep saying this when I talk to people out Western Australia, there are so many areas where the same is going on. So there's a you know, big rise in terms of population expectations. It, it may be a quiet backwater in some areas today, but my read is it's definitely in transition. So you want to be a little bit careful about and picky about where you actually go in the, in the postcode. Other piece of information, crime rate, it's a little higher than across Western Australia on average, but not dramatically so, a bit more burglary, a little bit more in the way of uh, motor, motor vehicle crimes, a little bit less graffiti in some areas. But nevertheless, I always look at that. And the other thing I always look at is flood maps. So this is the, the local flood map. This basically shows the risk of inundation and basically what it says, close to the beach, you know, or the, or the estuary, depending on whether it's a beach or an estuary, depending on what you, what you define it as, there is risk in that local area. Uh, and again, it might be worth, if you are looking at a particular property, going and looking at the uh, Western Australian mapping, you can actually go down to an individual property and look at the risk of flood, and you can even look at the 100-year risk and those sorts of things, right? So, um, so basically, I look at planning, I look at crime, I look at flood risk and fire risk if it's appropriate. Those are the main, main things. Now, I did, did just wander around the area a bit and take a few shots. Obviously, there's the big interchange, which uh, everybody knows about. Um, a lot of the standard sort of shops and you know parking and everything else. It gets quite busy. The agent said that it was actually much more busy now than it used to be. So it's, it's a much busier area. There are, of course, um, lots of developments and changes going on. The, the soil type is very sandy, as of course most in Western Australia, so a lot of it's quite low lying. Um, some older style properties, they are slowly being knocked down and basically being rebuilt, and almost always they're being replaced uh, with multi-occupancy developments. And so I, I did include a few of those, but just wanted to make the other point. You know, this, this uh, freeway that runs up the edge actually isolates this is the car park for the freeway for, for the beach right but then you have to go across the free off across the freeway to, to get to the beach the kuana freeway is right there you, you can't avoid it <laughs> yeah uh and of course it's the main drag into perth um and and some of the local um developments you know close to the beaches again is multi-occupancy so that's the that's the trend uh and pretty much wherever you look they're building more multi-occupancy multi um, properties. The planning is absolutely geared up to doing much more of that ahead and also more high-rise as well. Not multi-storey with 12, 14, 18, but, you know, four storeys is certainly legitimate. Um, and there's a lot of that happening, a lot more planned. So both the agents I spoke with said there's a lot of supply coming on. Okay. Um, some older style places with multi occupancy too. If you go, um, some new new developments further away from the the main beach area, but the same sort of story. Uh, and uh, again, a lot of new developments around the area too. So this is you know, as I say, a, an area in significant transition. So old places are being knocked down, new places are being built up. Um, uh, there are some still older style properties available. Uh, the point I'd make is that anything that's a standalone house, you're directly competing with developers who see it as an opportunity to put four, six, eight properties on the on the block, particularly if it's a large block. And so the price dynamics at the top end of the market or the middle of the top end is, is definitely being driven by this idea of redevelopment opportunity. A lot of retirement places as well, um, if you just move down the road a bit and, uh, you know, more of the sort of the same old, you know, again, even if you go over the other side, a bit away from something, you know, there's still a lot of uh, redevelopment and new development. So, you know, the point I want to make is this is an area in transition. Now, if I look at what's on the market, 138 properties, uh, that obviously is a combination of houses, apartments, units, villas, that's the whole lot, 138. Um, it's quite a lot. And I just put a few examples up to give you a bit of a flavour. You know, there's lots of apartments and villas. Funny how everyone's now talking about villas rather than <laughs> it's sort of a, you mean a townhouse. <laughs> um, but you can also see there's some, you know, reasonable houses and the prices vary. Now, it's worth highlighting, they tend to give you guide ranges. These are very, very inaccurate. This doesn't tell you much about what really, you know, the asking price is. The portals don't tell you a lot, in my view. 
obviously in some cases they're things like new to market and don't tell you anything at all expressions of interest offers offers above you know from uh, it's very much the, the the way it goes at the moment and i'd make the point that some of these townhouses you know you're wandering up to the same sort of prices as for some of the standalone properties in slightly different areas within the postcode so it gets quite complicated and you know pretty much so it goes on house house apartment apartment lots of apartments also there's quite a lot of stuff that comes on and goes quickly so one of the agents was saying you know if it's a really good if it's a good price property um, particularly if it's a house or a townhouse it will go very quickly but there's a lot that's hanging around so you know it's worth keeping an eye on the on the on the traffic as it comes through right? you often find is what i call category a category b category c the, the b's and the c's the ones that are not quite in the right place they got something that needs to be done they're the ones that tend to hang around a bit whereas the category a are the ones that that, that are moving quite quickly at the moment and you know the market's relatively buoyant compared with where it was say a couple of years ago in terms of sold properties remember i said 182 listed 42 sold in the last eight weeks but relative to the listings it's 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 a reasonable number but it's it's not like some places where in fact more is sold than is listed right so that's quite interesting and again i just included a few these are last asking prices almost always they give you ranges they don't tell you precisely the settlement price the settlement price doesn't really come through until the contracts are completed that takes three to six uh, weeks or more to come through so this is indicative now i must tell you that quite a few of the agents use these portals to try and persuade you that that's what the asking price and the settlement price is uh, and they give you ranges of course which don't tell you much at all but again it gives you a bit of a flavor of what's going on quite a few houses townhouses that there's some apartments selling but not as many um, there's a lot more interest in houses and townhouses um, and it goes back to what I said earlier on about you're competing with builders and developers as well as uh, other purchasers uh, in the area. House, 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 house. So let's go and talk about price trends. And this is basically off the data that, I, that I've been able to assemble. And I look over the two th 2013 to 2021 horizon, right? And, and so basically for units back in 2013, the average was around 515,000 then small rise in 2014 a small fall in 2015 another fall in 16 another fall in 2017 and a considerable fall in 2018 so about 11.2 percent down 435,000 then there was a rise in 2019 a small fall in 2020 and a small rise in 2021 so 465,000 was the uh, median the average a weighted average in fact compare that with 2013 and you can see that in fact it's gone nowhere and essentially the average gain per annum is 0.7 percent or if you apply inflation over the same period it's more than two percent down per annum that's one of the things about western australia particularly some of those close-in suburbs everyone's spruiking the this right yeah, there was a rise this year, but look, you got you know if you take a longer term view, right? The prices has been pretty flat for units. Uh, may, mention also again the increased supply, right? So there's more and more units coming on, and that's one of the reasons why we're seeing this this little, little bit of a trend in terms of uh, prices not going up particularly. Now there is some demand, but there is also a lot of supply. If I then look at houses, a slightly different story. Back in 2013, the median was 890 small fall in 14 a rise in 2015 a fall in 2016 a rise in 2017 slight rise in 2018 got up to 2019 at 950,000 then there was a drop last year went down 10 percent and it's risen by 14 percent so far this year so there's been a definite spike again a lot of that spike is because of this competition with builders looking at the opportunity under the new planning laws which are coming in to subdivide and uh, you know basically make money average gain over this 10-year period 1.7 percent or actually after inflation nowhere and the point there is that a lot of people basically say well you know 
Western Australian prices are booming. Well, yeah, they are booming here, but <laughs> if you take a longer term view, in most Western Australian suburbs close into Perth, it is tracking roughly inflation over the medium term. There are also people who unfortunately bought in 2015 and 2019 and are sitting on considerable losses. So there are still people with negative equity. And my own perspective on future movements, as we'll come to, is there is still some upside, but it's not dramatic. Now, if I go back up to the overall postcode, just to give you a bit of a flavour, this is for the whole of 6152. There's around 340 listings with 85 added in the past month. Compare that with 420 back in 2019 before COVID. 45% of houses, the rest units. So this is, this, is, this is a fundamental transformation going on in the area with more and more units. The vacancy rates for rentals is only 0.7% compared with 2.5% in mid-May 2019. There's about 30 vacancies compared with 115. Those renting houses, the gross yields on average are around 3% per annum. That's a slight rise from 2.7% last year, but the net yields only around 1.15% and is falling slightly. It's not much. And then if you think about, well, there's no capital appreciation, you know, the net yield isn't enough necessarily to cover all. <laughs> net yield is half paying for the interest and all the other running costs. It's, you're basically standing still. The rents for houses are rising just up a little, about 3% in the quarter, typical rent 525 dollars per week for a house and the average asking price actually pretty flat a little bit of movement around but typically around 950 the average settlement is coming in below asking around three percent now it does vary if you have a very very good plot with considerable opportunity for redevelopment then you will probably pay above asking but otherwise at or below is what I'm seeing. The intention to sell is just rising slightly at the moment from my surveys. If I go to units, gross yields are around 3.9%. That's a slight rise from 3.7. The net yields are about 2.15. So people are making slightly more on units. That's because, of course, the capital costs are lower to start with. But the rents are sliding slightly around 3% down in the last quarter, a typical rent of 398. There is quite a sort of significant tweak in the market there was a rise about six months ago when rent started to go up they've come back down again part of that's because people are able to kick people out and get other tenants in and it's also a question of supply and demand with a lot of new property coming on for rent as well the point there of course is there are other postcodes quite close by as well where people can also rent so it is it, it is not the buoyant rental market that the agents kept keep telling me asking prices for sale falling slightly about four percent down over the last quarter typical asking price around 530 and the settlements around five percent lower than asking so there's not much um, evidence unless it's a very very prestigious one-off unit of getting above asking so in other words my own view at the moment is if you were negotiating i would both the houses and units, I would be thinking that you'd be at or below asking rather than above. In terms of the stress data, this is from my survey. So in this postcode, there's about 11,000, 12,000 households, of which 3,500 are borrowing, 5,800 renting. So absolutely a lot of people are renting. And there's more than 4,500 properties for rent and, you know, the property investors, close to 4,000. But this is an interesting number. About 54% of households have some degree of financial stress. So financial stress is a cash flow measure, money in, money out. So this is not an area that's hugely buoyant, which is quite interesting. There is definitely, when, when we run the numbers and when we you know, do our analysis, we do see quite a few people who, who are in some difficulty. So if I break that down, that 54% is for the total household pool. If I look at it for the owner occupiers, Mild mortgage stress at 1,351. Severe stress, so those are deeply underwater, 770. And that's 56%. So there is actually quite a lot of financial stress in the area. And one of the things that we are seeing is a bit of pressure from the banks because quite a few people got into financial difficulty, not in the last 12 months, but over two or three years ago. And the banks are quite willing and keen to get people now to sell into this slight uptick so one of the things we're seeing is more of this slightly forced sell not not in terms of defaults 
right? Although the default rate could be as high as 6%. So the, the, what they're basically saying is, might, may, mate, it might be good to think about putting your property in the market. So that they're stuck on higher interest rates and a lot of the people who are in mortgage stress can't move to the lowest rates. Rental stress is also interesting. 44% of people are having difficulty paying their rents. That's quite high. Anything above from um, 35 to 40 percent worries me because that does then flow through to property investors. So we, we do have a, an issue with, 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 with some investors who are un, un, in some difficulty. Not dramatic, but enough to begin to think about this sort of, well, maybe I should begin to think about selling and you know, maybe I should think about uh, getting out because a lot of people have done the same maths on their investment property and they just say well hang on a moment I'm not actually making much at the moment right if I then just sort of show you the trend just in terms of the categories you can see there there's been a bit of an uptick recently we do track this on a sort of a monthly basis and some of the recent dynamics with uh, some of the lockdowns not in WA but you know the, the interstate stuff and the broader issues are sort of feeding through there was a little bit of relief when interest rates came down now as with these things it's a little volatile but you know you can see that that there's a little bit of uh, a little bit of movement there okay so then the final part of the conversation is we run scenarios and if you follow my work you'll know that i basically talk about the best case which is that the vaccines get rolled out and the borders open and everything gets back to normal the longer term crunch is when effectively we get uh, more of the um, lockdowns and when perhaps we get higher rates of infection or we get a real second wave. We haven't really had that so far, although some would say that the East Coast is getting close to it. If you believe that things are going to be pretty good, then over the next year for units, I think we could see cumulative about four to five percent over the next period. So not dramatic. A bit of growth but not dramatic growth but if in fact the the virus does get out then that could you know be below par as it were and if i then take that through to units the average 465 at the moment so we're looking at potentially you know a little bit of a rise for the rest of this year a small rise next year and then just a slight decline in 2023 to give you a net rise that we discussed so not a huge amount but there's a little, little bit of short-term momentum at the moment and that's because of the things we've, we've spoken about if i then go to houses it's a bit the same sort of story in terms of cumulative about six percent up out of 2023 so a small rise in the best case scenario small fall in the uh, longer term crunch or if the real second wave comes in a bit more of a fall but again not dramatically so and so the scenario would be potentially we could see the median just over the million in the end of this year into next year and holding at about that level which would be higher than it where it's been but not dramatically so so my read would be i think if, if i think about what, I, what i've said is that this is an area in significant transition with the new planning rules a lot of developments going on quite a few of those developments are actually taking a lot longer because they can't get the materials and they can't get the builders there is still quite a lot of demand for property in the area it's um, close into Perth it's accessible and it's still a nice area to live but that said the property dynamics are such that I don't see dramatic rises ahead you know small rises or small falls uh, and the trends of the last 10 years seem to me to be a good indicator of what we're probably like to see over the next little while um, I don't see a massive hike in prices in other words if you don't buy this year or you know, wait a year or two you probably wouldn't miss out dramatically uh, other than particular properties if they came up would you know come and come and go so that's in in a nutshell